Snap to Ritter. Dez looks. Going to throw. Caught. Bajan Robinson. Midfield. 40. 35. 30. 25. 20. 10. 5. Strike up the band. Oh, he did it. He took it to the house. No flags on the play. And Bajan Robinson just went 71 yards. Inside the Nest, an Atlanta Falcons audio experience. Here is your host, Craig Green. Welcome inside the nest. I'm your host, Craig Green. Let's get into it. So let's give credit to the Atlanta Falcons radio network of the audio of Desmond Ritter hitting Bajan Robinson with a 71-yard touchdown pass in the first quarter for the Falcons to retake the lead 14-7 to over the New Orleans Saints in a game that quickly got out of hand in the second half. Falcons were outscored 31-0 in the final 30 minutes and lost the game 48-17 to their bitter rivals. Let's uh, get to the injury update for this game and uh, see where things stand there. Mike Hughes, cornerback, was uh, able to clear concussion protocol and play against New Orleans. Uh, During the game, Caden Ellis left with a knee injury in the first quarter after a tackle on Taysom Hill and didn't return. Michael Pruitt also had a knee injury and did not return to the game. Calais Campbell, he was shaken up in the third quarter early on, but returned pretty quickly. Let's take a look at stats recaps from this game. Total first downs, 27 to 14 New Orleans. Third down efficiency, 4 of 11 to 3 of 10 Atlanta. Fourth downs, 1 of 1 to 0, uh, 0 for 1 New Orleans. Total plays, 66 to 60 New Orleans. Total yards, 400 to 389 New Orleans. Yards per play, 6.5 to 6.1 Atlanta. Passing yards, 311 to 246 Atlanta. Rushing yards, this is the big one here, 70, uh, 154 to 78 New Orleans. Red zone efficiency, 4 out of 5 to 1 for 3 New Orleans. Uh, Penalty yards, another big one that uh, hurt the Falcons. 3 of 15 for the Saints, 8 of 75 for Atlanta. And can't forget about the turnover battle. Once again, 0-3 to three in favor of New Orleans. Time of possession, 33-50 to 20 to 26-10 uh, New Orleans. For the Falcons, they were led in passing Desmond Ritter, 22 of 30, 291 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, was uh, not sacked during the game. Logan Woodside came in in relief in garbage time. He was 3 of 4 for 27 yards with an interception. Desmond Ritter's passer rating, uh, 111.9, his best of the season. Rushing attack was non-existent. Bijan Robinson, 11 carries, 28 yards. Tyler Algier, 6 for 24. Cordero Patterson, 5 for 20. Woodside had a 6-yard run, and Desmond Ritter had two rushes for no gain. Receiving-wise was led by Robinson, 7 catches, 103 yards, and the touchdown. Remember, that was 71 yards, so aside from that, he had 6 catches for only 32 yards. Scotty Miller, two catches, 66 yards. He had a big 56-yard catch to set up the John New Smith touchdown. Drake London, four for 41. John New Smith, again, as we mentioned, he had three for 29 with a touchdown. Kyle Pitts, two for 27. Michael Pruitt, one for 17. Van Jefferson, two for 13. John Fitzpatrick got in the game late, one for 12, his first NFL catch. Tyler Algier, three for 10. Kadero Hodge was targeted once, did not make a reception. In terms of turnovers, again, Desmond Ritter was credited with the Fumble on the bad snap by Ryan Newsel. That was his 12th loss fumble of the season to go along with 11 interceptions. Nate Landman defensively led the Falcons along with Richie Grant. 10 tackles, but uh, Landman had six solos and a tackle for loss. Richie Grant, four solo, had a sack, a tackle for loss, and a QB hit. Andre Smith came in relief of Caden Ellis. He had eight tackles, five solos, and a pass deflection. Clark Phillips, six tackles, five solo. One pass deflection. He was picked on early and often uh, during the uh, Saints passing attack. Calais Campbell, possibly his last game in Atlanta. Five tackles, four solo, had a sack, two for loss, two QB hits. Jesse Bates, the uh, pro bowler, four tackles. All of them are solo tackles. Uh, Three sacks on the day for the Falcons. One by Grant, one by Campbell, and the third was by Bud Dupree, who also may be playing his last game as a Falcon as well. So 
not only with the loss, but with the victory by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers over the Carolina Panthers by a score of 9 to nothing. The Buccaneers win the NFC South. They will take on the Philadelphia Eagles in the wild card game in Tampa on a Monday night. And as a result of the Bucks winning that game, the Falcons were eliminated before their game was over. But quite frankly, the Falcons game was essentially over at the end of the third quarter. As again, it was a 17-17 game at halftime. And then all of a sudden, things got out of hand. Let's go to the uh, scoring summary. So Falcons got the scoring started first in the first quarter. Seven plays, 79 yards, 339. John New Smith caught a 15-yard touchdown pass from Desmond Ritter. The extra point by Young by Young Waiku made it seven nothing. Saints scored get a touchdown from At Perry on an 18-yard pass from Derek Carr after a seven-play 75-yard drive that ate up three minutes and 41 seconds. Blake Groupie's extra point tied it up at seven. Then you, the clip you heard at the beginning of the podcast: Bijan Robinson going 71 yards after a short pass from Desmond Ritter, and he outran the Saints defense to get into the end zone. Ku's extra point makes it 14-7, two plays, 75 yards in just 48 seconds. Second quarter was uh, the Saints outscored the Falcons 10-3 in the second quarter. Condre Miller, a three-yard touchdown run. Uh, Blake Rupi's extra point knotted the game at 14 after a 15-play, made that a 16-play, 75-yard drive that ended in eight minutes and nine seconds. Saints get the ball back. Groupie converts a field goal after a eight-play, 32-yard drive that takes another minute and 32 off the clock. So at that point, the Saints led 17-14. As time expired before the half, Young Way Koo took the, uh, tied the game at 17 after a 10-play, 63-yard drive, 56 seconds off the clock. Very good efficiency by Desmond Ritter in the offense. The rest of the game was controlled by the Saints. They scored four touchdowns and a field goal. Third quarter, the Saints scored twice. Chris Olave's 26-yard touchdown pass from Derek Carr made it 24-17. This was after Desmond Ritter was intercepted. Then right after that, the uh, Falcons came out, punted. Rashid Shahid, Rashid Shahid scored a 39-yard touchdown pass from Derek Carr, made it 31-17. Groupie adds a field goal in the fourth with 9.57 to go. Then 55 seconds later, after another turnover, after another punt, excuse me, A.T. Perry's a six-yard touchdown pass from Carr makes it 41-17. This game is essentially over. And the uh, touchdown that everyone is talking about on Monday as we are recording this, Jamal Williams finishes off the uh, the scoring with a one-yard touchdown run. Groupies extra point makes it 48-17. to The reason why everybody's talking about this touchdown is because you know, the Fal- this is uh, it's clearly in garbage time in the last minute of the game. Logan Woodside has entered the game for the Falcons. They're clearly not trying to make a comeback victory. But uh, Woodside is inter- intercepted by Tyron Matthew. Matthew runs the ball down to the one-yard line and credit to the Falcons for chasing him down and not letting him get into the end zone. The Saints come out in victory formation, but then instead Jameis Winston and the offense decide to basically kind of tush-push their way into the end zone to get Jamal Williams the touchdown either because it was part of an incentive in his contract or because they just felt bad for the man who led the league in touchdowns last year who had, who had not scored at all in 2023. So at the end of the game, typically the coaches shake hands at midfield or somewhere in the middle of the field, you know, say good job or whatever it may be. Arthur Smith was visibly upset. He did not shake Saints coach Dennis Allen's hand. Instead, he told him in no uncertain language that he thought it was, uh, I'll just uh, paraphrase here, quote, effing BS what happened uh, when uh, the Saints decided to uh, score a touchdown in victory formation. After the game, Saints coach Dennis Allen in a press conference said that Arthur Smith had every right to be upset and apologized to Coach Smith and the Falcons organization for what happened. Jameis Winston basically owned it. And paraphrasing him, basically he said that they – knew what the play was, but instead the players decided to go rogue and do whatever they wanted to do. That is not a good sign for Dennis Allen. That's also not a good sign for Jameis Winston, who clearly shows he doesn't want to listen to his coach and could be one of the reasons why he's no longer in Tampa and had, that's why he's a backup now. So, But either way, the Saints win the game 48-17. to Their record improves to 9-8. and Falcons drop to 7-10 and for the third consecutive season. Both teams were eliminated on Sunday the Falcons were eliminated with the Buccaneers win. The Saints were eliminated with Green Bay 
defeating the Chicago Bears at Lambeau Field. So despite the 9-8 record of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Bucs held a tiebreaker. The Saints and the Falcons both now are sitting on the couch. So let's look at, take a look at the good things from this past game. Uh, Desmond Ritter in the first half was part of the good. The pass rush was getting to Derek Carr and moving him off his spot. They were forcing bad throws. And folks, that is just about it. The bad. Let's go with the bad because that's so much easier to talk about in this kind of game. Penalties. Five of them in the first half, including a stupid personal foul on Michael Pruitt for headbutting a Saints player after the Falcons picked up a first down at the Saints' three-yard line and ended up getting moved back to the 18. The Falcons did score a touchdown, but you have to keep your composure there because those are the type of things that take touchdowns off the board and put field goals on them. The entire second half was god-awful. Atlanta was outscored 31-0 in the final 30 minutes. No fight, no response. Red zone again was an issue. Down 31-17 and inside the two-yard line, Atlanta is running a spread offense, pistol formation with motions and orbits instead of just lining up in a goal line set and just using a power run game to move the Saints defense off the ball. I mean, I'm a, I'm a supporter of Coach Smith. I believe he deserves another year, but I'll never understand his philosophy on, on what he was doing in the red zone there. Just line up, smack him in the mouth, and get the damn yard. That's all that it really takes. So I don't know if it's an indictment on the on the players or on the scheme they're running. But again, I mean, how hard is it just to line up in a goal line formation, put some extra offensive linemen out there and just push those guys off the freaking football? So up next, the offseason officially begins because the Falcons were eliminated. No playoffs for them. And uh, we'll be back with a couple of awards and superlative episodes during the offseason. Uh, things will pick back up again once the 2020 year league begins in March. Uh, unless there's something extremely breaking that needs to be addressed, that will, you know, like I said, we'll check back in here and there. So uh, please keep your eyes open for any new episodes and keep your notifications on. We appreciate all you guys checking in throughout the entire season. So. Since this is the last game, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the uh, season stats for the Falcons. Let's take a look at passing yards. Let's start there. Desmond Ritter obviously was the uh, passing leader for the team. He uh, had 64.2% completions, 249 for 388, 2,836 yards. He threw 12 touchdowns. He also threw 12 interceptions. His long pass of the year was uh, 71 yards. He had 7.3 yards per attempt. Taylor Heineke. 74 for 136, 54.4% completions, 890 yards, five touchdowns, four interceptions, 6.5 yards, a completion. Logan Woodside, three of four, 27 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. His long pass of the year was a 12-yard pass. Rushing attack led by Bijan Robinson, 214 carries, 976 yards, scored four rushing touchdowns. Tyler Algier, 186 carries, 683 yards, four touchdowns. Uh, Robinson, 4.6 yards a carry. Algier, 3.7 yards a carry. Desmond Ritter, the third leading rusher on the team, 53 carries. He had 193 yards, five rushing touchdowns. So again, 17 combined touchdowns for Desmond Ritter compared to and 12 interceptions, along with 12 lost fumbles. Cordero Patterson, 50 carries, 181 yards, no touchdowns on the ground, 3.6 yards a carry. Receiving-wise, the Falcons were led by Drake London, 69 receptions, 905 yards, two touchdowns, 13.1 yards per reception. Bijan Robinson, second on in the team, 58 catches, 487 yards, 8.4 yards a catch, and four receiving touchdowns. Kyle Pitts, 53 catches, 667 yards, 12.6 yards a catch, three touchdowns. Johnny Smith, 50 catches, 582 yards, 11.6 yards a catch, three touchdowns. Matt Collins, 18 catches, 251 yards. Tyler Algier, 18 catches for 193 yards. So defensively, the uh, Falcons were led by Jesse Bates, 132 tackles, 89 solos. He had assisted on 43 tackles, had uh, three fumbles, and two interceptions on the season. Actually, no, six interceptions on the season as well. Scored one touchdown. Caden Ellis, 122 tackles, 82 solos, four sacks. Nate Lamon uh, also had 110 tackles, 
Richie Grant, 103 tackles. Falcons led in sacks by Calais Campbell and Bud Dupree, who had six and a half apiece. Arnold Ebicati had six as well. Caden Ellis, four. David Anyamata, four. Richie Grant had uh, Lorenzo Carter. Zach Harrison all had three sacks apiece as well. So good job by the Falcons there. In terms of uh, forced fumbles, Jesse Bates had three. Nate Lamb in three. Richie Grant, two. David Anyamata, two. Bud Dupree and Arnold Abicati also had two forced fumbles as well. Jesse Bates led the team in interceptions. He had six. Nate Lamb and Richie Grant each had one apiece. Special teams wise, Young Way Koo had uh, was 10 of 10 on uh, tw- from 20 to 29, 30 to 39. So 20 for 20 right there. He was uh, he was 9 for 11 from 40 to 49 yards and 3 of 6 from 50 and beyond. Bradley Pinion had a pretty decent season punting, 75 punts, 3,523 punting yards. His long of the season, 66 yards. He averaged 47 yards a punt. He had only 353 return yards in the season. Uh, 27 of his points are inside the 20, and he netted 41.5 yards a punt. Good job, Bradley Pinion. In terms of team statistics, let's take a look where the Falcons ranked there. The Falcons finished 17th in total offense. In terms of their passing attack, they were 21st in uh, total in passing yards. In rushing yards, they were 9th. Points per game, this is one of the Falcons' biggest problems. They were towards the bottom of the league. They were 26th in scoring, just averaging only 18.9 points per game. But uh, where we saw the big jump was defensively for the Falcons. Falcons finished a year 11th in total defense. They were 8th against the pass, and they were 21st against the run. The Falcons were 18th in scoring defense, only allowing 21.9 points per game. But again, the biggest problem for them was turnovers. The Falcons were minus 12 in the turnover category. They throwing 17 interceptions, giving away 11 fumbles. So they gave away the ball 28 times. Only took it away 16 times, again, for a minus 12. Just eight interceptions, eight forced fumbles on the season for a defense that was 11th in total defense. They could not get the ball back to the offense quite enough. So, you know, again, that's one thing that that you need to look at in terms of this season as a whole and how successful or how much of a failure it was, who gets blamed for what, and, and uh, you know, where the team goes from here because – yeah, the defense looked good, but they also didn't force enough turnovers. They didn't score enough points on their own. Special teams, no touchdowns at all. So, you know, again, this 7-10 record doesn't look like the other 7-10 records from the past two years. But either way, it's still not exactly where the Falcons want to be. All right, so we're going to call it good right here. So thanks again, everyone, for checking out Inside the Nest all throughout the season. We'll be back with you here very, very soon. Uh, probably sooner than you know it and again since the games are the Falcons games are over there will be no more games to review until we get to the preseason so stick with us throughout the offseason and throughout the playoffs we'll come back on and have some fun things to talk about and keep your alerts on for when the next podcast will drop so again thank you all for uh, checking this out and appreciate all of your time and your and your attention and thanks to anybody who is uh listened and shared all season long I'd like to invite you guys to follow me on social media as we always do facebook instagram x snapchat youtube and threads at craig g sports and as we always ask please like share this podcast with any falcons fans you know as well as download and subscribe again thanks everybody we'll see you very very soon sayonara and buenos noches